you are about to receive messages that may be harmful to your mental state. Your sense of reality will be questioned. Your view on things will be altered. You are now part of the Meta. The Meta controls everything. The Meta determines what will and will not happen. You are watching the Meta Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is August the 1st, Saturday, the first day of the month of August, and I am here to explain to you what is not happening in EVE Online right now. Nothing bad is happening in Fountain today. No one is leaving Fountain. No one is jumping their ships out of Fountain right now. No Titans have died in Fountain today. Not one. There have been no iHubs lost. Not one. If there were Titans lost today, they were Horde Titans. Masquerading as Init Titans. Everything is fine. Hold on, I gotta jump my, uh, my work wall here. Hold on. Okay. Nothing is happening. Everything is perfectly fine. This is exactly what we expected. We've been fighting this war for a whole month now. I'm glad that you're joining us today on the Meta Show so that we can provide you with the truth about what's happening in New Eden. Not the lies that you see on those other shows, especially the bullshit that comes out of Ron USMC's mouth. He's a Marine. He eats crayons. Don't listen to him. Okay, I, I can't. I can't keep this going too long. I, I can't keep it going I, for that one. I'm paralyzed. Like I was gonna try to keep a straight face, but <laughs> my God, dude, that was beautiful. Wow. Oh boy. <sighs> Hi guys, welcome to the Meta Show. I he hope you're all enjoying yourself. He even has stickers. He even has. Know, right? Show See, those off, baby. Go. That's we got. That's we got amazing. our uh, Imperium. Uh, Imperium epaulets and everything. We're oh, ready. Oh man, we're it's so go. good. It's so good. I, you know, he, he said he was going to do this as a as a fun gimmick, and uh, we were feeding the whelp gods a little bit earlier, uh, as you guys know. If you're a part of the Imperium, or if you're if you're involved in World War B at all, uh, you know that a uh, brave initiative pilot uh, warped uh, two of his titans to a the wrong gate, and we've had an interesting morning. Uh, we hope that just like the last time the Imperium did a big move up, that the whelp gods uh, appreciate our sacrifice uh, and uh, take it in the uh, appropriate sort of way uh but yeah no wild times and that is just it even got the like the little the little stars and bars i, or I what, got all kinds got of stuff going on. going on here i have random things that i can add to my costume to make it look cool anyway look <laughs> yes today's been a fun day so far i'll tell you right now i'm pretty sure that the main reason why our guy misheard zxb and heard lbg instead was because he really wanted to give Dark Shines a headache, because that's what happened. Uh, so you know, it it, it it is what it is. It's, it's move ops happen. Everybody feeds a little bit every sometimes. It's okay. I mean, it's sort of Everything tradition at this point because when, when when we you know the well known Imperium regions of Cloud Ring and well known Imperium region of Pure Blind, when we withdrew from those uh, just before World War B started. Uh, we also lost a couple Titans. So this is just sort of like, a, you know, the, the usual course of business as these things go. Um, yeah, so we're actually, so guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here because Briss just did an amazing job with the uh, Baghdad Brisk impression. We are, this is going to be a have fun. Character. I'm going to get ready for the real show. So go yep. ahead. I'm calling uh, so, you Fountain Frank. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna play the show straight uh, this week. So like last week, we did mainly just like uh, shit talking because it was uh, one of those kind of shows. Uh, but we actually have a, enough news related things that we're gonna do. Like we have a segment involving. Uh, I mean, hell, the show is really stepping up its game because we're literally having the meta show's first costume change taking place right now. Uh, it's not quite. Uh, like the Lady Gaga concert I saw a few years ago where there was costume changes like every 15 minutes or so. But, uh, you know, we're working on it. We're working on it. Um, 
So yeah, so here's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, we actually do have uh, some CCP news. We have a dev blog involving uh, changes to command chips, uh, and we have uh, Asher Elias and Jay Amazingness are going to be joining us as guests. Uh, we wanted to have them on last week, but at the same time, uh, just like last week, uh, we had lots of combat going on, and things apparently have calmed down enough uh, that we can have uh, our guys on as guests. So we're pretty excited about that. And uh, now, <laughs> that's amazing. You look, you look like nothing happened. You're just like... Clark Kent. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. We're back. Excellent. Welcome to the Meta Show, everybody. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I, I will start off with my my little rant that I want to get into. And you know, for those of you who have watched the Meta Show before, which hopefully is all of you, uh, one of the big things that I complain about all the time is when CCP goes hot and drops us major changes. Uh, in the middle of, of whatever, it, whether it's a war or whether it's, you know, just a regular day of the week, when they drop it at patch day and they don't tell us anything about the changes until boom, you know, they hit the live server. So we saw that happen uh, on Tuesday with the release of the command ship pass, uh, balance pass. I, guys, I hate this. I hate this. There were, we're in the middle of a major war. Fleet commanders use boosting ships all the time. It's a pretty common thing. It's not like anybody didn't know that. And the fact that we get zero notice and all of a sudden, you know, we are dealing with uh, changes while fleets are getting ready to go out, out two hours after downtime. And all of a sudden, you know, the stats on the ships change and people are trying to figure out what it means. That's frustrating to me. I know it's frustrating to you. I have passed those concerns on to the developers, you know, and at the end of the day, this is not the first time that they have done this. I doubt it will be the last time that they do it. But we got to make sure that they know there is no reason why, when you're making changes like this, that you can't give the player base a heads up like a day or two. That's all it is. It doesn't need to be a week. It doesn't need to be a dev blog. It doesn't need to be a chance for everybody to provide their feedback or to talk about it. If you just want to make the change and you don't care what anybody has to say about it, that's fine. But you got to give us heads up because people were prepped to ready to do things that had to change those plans immediately because they didn't know whether their ships were still any good or not. Now, we'll talk about what exactly changed uh, in uh, later in the show, and we'll talk with Jay and, and Asher about it. But in the end, it's not about what they changed, but it's about how that they communicated it. Now, I want to say, in, in the interest of fairness, CCP has done a pretty good job in the last six or seven months of providing us with updates in a timely fashion and giving us the chance to opine on them and provide feedback. This, I'm hoping that this was just an accident. I'm hoping that this is just, hey, you know what? It's summertime. Everything's quiet. You know, there was some miscommunication. We didn't know when this was going live or whatever. I hope that that's all it was and that we get this addressed later on because I don't want us sliding, backsliding into the bad old days of major patches hitting, nothing works because it was never tested on CC, nobody had a chance to talk about it ahead of time, and, and then people get angry and, 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 and start screaming. So in any event, that's it. That's all I want to complain about. That's my soapbox. Mittens, do you have a soapbox or do you want us to get Asher and Jay in here? Uh, let me think. Uh, mainly I'm just happy to sort of have my life kind of returning to normal here, right? Like the, the the fact that I'm able to do a normal meta show. I have almost finished assembling my battle station. Uh, if you've been following my misadventures of trying to set up my new desk on Twitter, uh, I am, I've still not done the cable management, uh, but I do have a, a battle station that looks kind of like a keep star now. I've got two vertical panels. I've got, you know, it's going places. And today I got to finally place some EVE Online and Client uh after like several days of just nonsense and chaos and what have you uh, running around sniping hacker hackers with uh jay earlier so that was pretty cool but yeah that, that's basically it i just i i don't really have anything to rant about i am just continuing to enjoy eve online and started asking people awkward questions about uh doing planetary interaction so it's 2020 uh the matani is playing eve and asking people questions about pi so you know up is down left is right and uh, brisk is dressed up like uh an iraqi commander we're just gonna roll with it guys so speaking exactly. of rolling with it why don't we yeah let's uh, let's bring on our guests let's all right it. let's hit it All right, and two men who don't need any introduction to the Meta Show audience. We have Jay Amazingness from Goon Swarm, Asher Elias from Goon Swarm. We wanted to bring these two guys on to talk about what's going on in the war, talking about what's going on in the game, 
and because we missed them they were supposed to join us last week uh and uh, plans were not uh plans were, were forced to be scrapped so we couldn't bring them on so now we're bringing them on this week we so hi guys stuff. how are you doing what's going on jay is still helpfully muted i don't think he realizes that he's muted or not but uh he uh -oh. is Everybody is xing up like they're gay for Jay, which I am also gay for Jay. But, which is uh, correct. There, yeah, Hello, no, he's Jay. still uh, yeah. There you go. You, you succeeded. Good there morning. Go. How are you? Well, how are you? I'm good. So, in, in terms of war updates, I'll just go over briefly, you know, the state of play as of August 1st today. I mean, as you guys can see, as, as happened earlier, uh, Initiative is finally pulling out of Fountain. We are restaging to ZXB and, and, uh, and Delve. Uh, that those ops are ongoing. We got caught, obviously. Uh, it happened about two and a half hours ago. Uh, one of our Titan pilots, as Minton said, warped uh, to the wrong gate with two of his Titans. One of them was a hyperspatial rag. The other one was a very, very old Titan. I think he had refitted it. But one of those was, was a, I think it was like a 2014, 2015 old Titan. It was a very old Titan. So felt bad that that one died. Um, they were intercepted, caught on the gate by Horde, and snuffed out. Both of the systems were sino jammed, so what ended up happening was they had to gate the dreads in. They had about 20 or 30 dreads. Those were all killed, obviously, but the two Titans died, uh, which is not bad, because so far, this is the this is the third restaging that Init has done since the start of the war. We went from IGE to YTAC 2, I guess the second restaging, and now from YTAC 2 to ZXB. And we've only lost these two ships. So that's that's not bad. So far, I think the count is uh, Panafam has lost six Titans moving, if I recall correctly. And I'm not trying to spin. I'm being honest. If I if I have that number wrong, well, they, they try me. to act either five or six. But like you know, that is one of the funniest things. Whenever I see one of these like test guys compiling a like campaign battle report, is they ignore all the stuff that Many Love has killed in Jita. They ignore all the I guess not just Jita, but all of the jump freighter losses. And they ignore all of the like in transit to their staging. Like they lost like five or six Titans. Uh, and I'm sure somebody can actually get the exact number. I don't really care. Uh, but it is kind of funny because they act like those deaths didn't actually happen. Well, um, surely they won't count these either. Just to be you know fair. Oh, of and course, honest. right? Because course if, if moving if moving it's Titans move doesn't count, it's a move up. So then clearly Baghdad Brisk was right, and or Fountain Frank was right, and that those <laughs> Fountain Frank. I love that. Uh, but, you know, regardless, well, you know, the interesting thing about this war and where we're going with it is just like uh, continually, we don't really have me like today was kind of awesome because it was the first time that we've had in a while uh, due to the sacrifice, uh, the noble sacrifice to the wealth gods provided to us by the initiative Titan pilot. Uh, you know, we haven't really had that many battle reports that are, you know, north of 100 billion isk in general. And so this one cracked, I think, 300 if you total up all sides. But, you know, one of the things that has just been compared to the Goon Fleet Expeditionary Force deployment before this uh, is that there's just not that many, like, meat grinder fights. There's been a few, like when there was that uh, fountain carrier feed situation. Uh, and then, like, during a Titan Gang or something like that. Uh, but most of the time, it's like, you know, one side loses their lodgy and then retreats back across a regional border into a super, sort of a super capital protection zone. Uh, so it's um, it's been kind of weird. I mean, I understand the mechanics as to why people are not really investing that much in these fights, because, you know, it's a long slog and we're all trying to preserve our forces and whatever. Uh, so regardless of how it went down, it is kind of nice for everybody to have a, uh, you know, spend several hours this morning or this afternoon uh, just killing the shit out of each other. Um, yeah, I don't know. Good times. Well, I think I think what we all expect now is is that the the fighting is going to center around these regional gates because that's that's where that's where the choke points are, obviously. So forty nine attack and Quarius is one of the choke points. TCAG is one of the choke points. Uh, Z ZXB is one of the choke points. So I think th those are the places where we're gonna. I think we're gonna start to see the probably the bigger fights. Now the hard part is. You know, regardless, bad guys have to get in somehow, and that means they're going to have to take a regional gate, uh, and that 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 makes it very easy for us to try to stop them. It also makes it very difficult for them to get in. But at the same time, everybody knows where these are, and we can expect that there's going to be a ton of tie dye, a ton of people uh, crashing those gates to try to get in and try to fight. And uh, I, I think I would expect to see we're a month in now. I would expect to see probably a big fight in the next two, you know, week or two. Uh, that's just my gut call. Um, now, obviously, my gut calls have been wrong in the past. You know, trolling isn't always trolling when you guys actually follow it up. 
I was going to have Baghdad Briss make a joke about how you know, the Malpay uh, ADMs are crap. You guys need to go get those ADMs up to sixes. They're only in the threes now. Uh, but I figured if I did that as a joke, you guys would actually do it. So I, I kind of don't want you to have to go rat. Uh, so I won't I won't say that. Um, but in the end, I think, you know, like we're, we're kind of at that point now where the war is going to start getting real. Uh, and it is no longer uh, stuck defending space that we can't defend. Uh, and I think that's going to make a lot of changes uh, possible tactically, which I'm looking forward to. But I don't want to keep talking. I want to hear from Jay and Asher because these guys have been on the front lines. H how do you guys feel so far about how things are going? You mean in the overall situ the overall war situation? Yeah. I think we're doing probably as best as we can. I mean, I think Initiative uh, fought a far superior force for a long time, and they did an admirable job. Um, if you look at, like, the Iskloss, it's actually really close. So um, considering there was that really giant carrier whelp, that was uh, pretty good. Um Overall, you know, we're we're gonna see like a tightening up of, of, of lines here and that you guys have pulled back. Um but I'd say in general we're uh you know, we're we're having pretty much what we expected so far. Um we kind of expected them to maybe try to force things a little more than they have. And they have not done that. So um I guess that's uh that's a bit of a surprise. But other than that, it's been pretty uh been going pretty well for us, I'd say. Uh we've held a lot of our space. Now it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, where does Panfam go? Obviously, they've been the um, the the real aggressors of this war, and they've been the real numbers of this war. I mean, you see test forming fleets and you know getting 70, 80 munins in a fleet now, uh, when they were getting you know two full fleets at the start of the war. So their numbers have really flagged, um, but Panfam numbers have just gotten better. Um, so uh, where they stage is something that I think everyone in the game is gonna be you know keenly watching at this point. I mean, that makes sense, right? If, you, if you're doing well and you're you're hitting your goals and you're accomplishing what you're trying to do, then yeah, your guys are going to have the momentum. You're going to want to log in. Your players are going to come and, and fight. So I give I give PanFam all the credit. Uh, you know, talking to Gobbins and 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 Headliner and the guys, and you know they're doing what they got to do. So uh, I I think the fact that that Fountain held for a month was about as good as we would we could have expected. Uh, I don't think. You know, it was it was realistic for us to think that we were going to hold it for even as long as we did. So I'm glad that we did. Uh, they still got they still got some space to clean up. You know, there's still a lot of iHubs and timers that need to come out, and there's still some structures left in there. They got you know, got keep stars in there. They got to get killed. So I think it's a matter of time, and hopefully we'll get some skirmishes and, and some good fights out of that. Uh, but we'll see what happens from there. Asher, what's your take? How, At how the start of the war, I asked Shines to give me two weeks, and okay. uh, he, he's. Uh, He's more, he's doubled what I asked, so that's pretty pretty darn good. Go. Um, so we're 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 doing fine there. I mean, I mean, it's obviously, you know, we, we were never going to hold Fountain. You try you try your best, and uh, but there's no way with this many enemies and this many fronts to hold that sort of space that's really way out there. Um, as the lines starting to tighten up, and people have to come more and more into cap and super range. Um, we'll see, you know, what their strategy is. And, you know, I have some ideas, like there's, there's sort of a balance, like what can I say versus, you know, if I predict what they do, does that help them guess what I'm guessing they're doing? Right. Like, you don't have to think about this. Right. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. Don't, um, don't give up any future plans since we know yeah. they're all watching. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we'll see what they're planning to do as, as the lines tighten up. Jay, so what's your take? Good news. The fountain side of things has been a lot more interesting, um, mostly because that's where been, the fight's been happening. The fights down south mostly consist of one side jumping into another region, uh, waiting for the hostiles to form, and then running away. That's true of both us and uh, and Tappy. So Jay is always kind of quiet, guys. You you just sort of, by the nature of things, you need to lean in to hear He's him. Quiet, that's, that, that, that's how he rolls. I can get closer to the. Let me. I get closer to the microphone. There you go. That's oh better. yeah, that's better. That's good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, one of the things. Wait, wait, I, Jay, has this been an option for years? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we just had to Seriously. ask him. <laughs> have I been listening to you very carefully for seven years, where you could have just leaned forward? <laughs> Basically. Oh my fucking god, dude! Seriously, we should have asked you to to unfuck this years ago. Um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, I did see somebody commenting in chat that uh, Asher's comment about how uh, he had asked uh, Initiative to you know hold on for you know just two weeks, uh, and we got uh, a month out of North Fountain. 
uh, and fountain in general. Uh, there was a similar comment, I think it was by Bleezy123 I was seeing here. I haven't had a chance to really pay too much attention to scroll back because I've been laughing my ass off still. So I'm a, I'm a little bit more ADHD <laughs> than usual uh, on today's episode. So I will get back to monitoring chat and trolling people and uh, being a jerk, I promise, don't worry. Uh, but uh, one of the comments was, uh, North Quarius, we, we need to acknowledge the fall of the United Earth Directorate or whatever. Uh, and there's actually a really cool story there. So there were, uh, you know, I know that our enemies get mad about talking about floodplains. And this is more of a chill show because, as you can see, uh, whatever, we're, I, I, I'm very confident with the way that things are going. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, and there's a question about, like, how is the whole floodplains thing working? Um, so North Quarius actually, uh, sort of similar to how the initiative was holding Fountain and doing a sort of stage withdrawal uh, against overwhelming numbers, uh, North Quarius is another area that we designated as a floodplain. Uh, and that was held uh, originally, uh, we expected to lose in the first week because it's just completely indefensible. And uh, one of our member corps, PLA, uh, which is a Chinese member corp run by, I always mispronounce his name, Silvitney, I think is the right way to say his uh, space name, uh, basically decided on a personal, like a, a corporation quest, they were going to have this alt alliance called United Earth Directorate and that they were going to like hero mode North Quarius and that they were going to defend Quarius. And uh, we were like, this is insane you are not going to be able to do this. This is a floodplain region. If you want to, you know, charge at this windmill with a lance, you can do it. Uh, and what became extremely surprising, and, and you know, it was uh, really kind of stunning. It was sort of a gift from the heavens, uh, is that I think it was, was it last, in the last three or four days, maybe within the last week, sometime in this recent period, uh, you know, all of the bad guys got together to finally sweep uh, the U the UED hubs in North Quarius. Um, so you know, not just trolling we, guys. Yeah, like actually, and like we thought that this was going to be gone almost immediately because just the the jump distances were so long, and we didn't realize that like this one corporation, this one dedicated guy, could essentially hero mode fight against incredible odds, just like the initiative had. So essentially, in both North North Quarius and in uh, Fountain. Uh, the initiative and uh, UED have bought us a tremendous amount of time to unfuck our process, right? Like, uh, one of the things that, you know, we hey, don't really Mins, talk about. You know, sorry. I got to hop out of chat for five minutes, but can I say a really important thing before, before I go? What's that? Can I get in the chat a, uh, a Wakataka Kage from all my sumo boys? And I'll, I'll be back. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. Sumo boys. Um, but... Basically, now that things have calmed down, I can talk about, like, instead of just, like, talking mad shit like we did on the, the last show, uh, we can, like, talk about some of the behind-the-scenes the stuff, is that uh, playing for time is very important in a war like this, if you're on D, because, like, there is usually, like, there's not only just, like, the war itself, like, you need to have your spaceships beat the other guy's spaceships. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of stuff that it will sort of go into the category of, like, org work. Also, I look like I'm frozen on this uh, on this screen with my no, mouth. No, you're good. Just sort of, we can uh, see Okay, that's good. I guess my Twitch is locked up. Anyway, um, org work. So there's just been a tremendous amount of like backend related stuff where we're like, okay, we need to have a better coordination system. We need to spin up an entire SIG or squad. We have actually done that with several new SIGs or squads, which have then uh, been doing really heroic stuff in the war, such as uh, Goonstorm Offensive Ventosis, which is DeClorean's crew. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's. It, I kind of feel like things have started to, you know, it obviously. Our enemies are going to say, you know, Fountain Frank, Baghdad Bob, if I say that I really feel like we're kind of hitting our groove here. But if, if you look uh, at what the legacy group has tried and failed to do over and over again, especially in like the last couple of days, um, you know, yesterday they tried all day during our, our volumes and they didn't get a single reinforcement through. Not a single thing that we had got reinforced by the bad guys because we defended successfully. Now, of course, I'm not talking about the Fountain situation. I'm talking about the efforts of legacy who are out of fat and test who are out of detect b uh so you know we'll, you know we'll have to see like maybe nc dot and these guys are going to come in here and they're going to come into our space into fortress delve and fight us and suddenly it's going to make all the difference but we have done i think a damn fine job of just beating the living shit out of test every time they come into our space all day every day and stopping them from doing much of anything um and Tomorrow yeah is... I'm, I'm pretty happy with it Ways I think this has been like a they've given us an extra month to prepare with this sort of stuff. Uh, we've, um, as you say, we've sorted out a lot of the processes and things. And I feel like if they would have came in to 
Aquarius or Pyrrhid basis with Legacy and uh, whoever else Legacy stages with. With the same ferocity that Panfam attacked Fountain, I think it could have gone a lot. Um, it would have been a lot more longer days than there have been. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's tough because, like, whenever you're in a defensive war like this, right, like, I am entirely aware uh, when I get up on the meta show and I run my mouth and I say that, you know, guys, we've got this, that it's entirely, and I do believe we've got this, uh, you know, especially in a war like this, you really need to be building momentum and the Imperium has been building momentum and Legacy and Test and those guys have been losing momentum day in, day out. Panfam is gaining momentum because obviously they are succeeding and pushing the initiative out of Fountain, right? And so credit to them. Uh, but uh, in general, with the, the balance of things, time is always on the side of the defender, right? Because the war is optional for these 103 alliances that have blewed up, these 150,000 pilots that have gotten together to declare a, a war of extermination against goons. Let's get rid of goons because they're, it's funny because they're all like, ooh, goons are bad, like goon swarm, goon swarm, goon swarm. And then they spend all their time fighting the initiative right, who are, as far as I can tell, not considered to be bad guys, right? Like, I'm a jerk, I'm the wizard hat guy, and instead of actually successfully coming for Delve, uh, they're like, oh, well, you know, goons are awful, they need to be removed from the game, and now we're going to fight the initiative for a month. Okay, I mean, it's... it's I believe the public perception of Init changed when they attacked Hard Knocks the first time. I think that since then, Init have been, you know, sort of bad guys. Oh. Chris, are you muted? Did you did you fix Chris, it? I'm I still mean, muted. All right. Well, I guess I should actually talk instead just, of just. He just uh, talked talking. mad shit about Horton. I was totally talking mad shit about everyone. No, what I was what I was saying was. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. All right. So what I was saying was, in it is I, I think. I think when we when we demonstrated that we could go in and plan and take out HK, I think that that kind of changed some people's perceptions of us. Now I think the wormholers hated us uh, because we were coming after another wormhole group. But then later on they kind of well they we're, you're coming after the wormhole group everybody else doesn't like, so maybe they're not not so bad after all. Uh, but I was talking to a major alliance leader yesterday, who's uh, on the bad guy side. And one of the things he reminded me of is is that we like we in it like to talk about ourselves like. You know, we are just the same old roaming alliance that we used to be, you know, three or four or five years ago, where we never held Saab and we just followed, we were like PL, we went where the content was and we weren't held down or anything. Uh, but now, you know, we're one of the top five in the game between us and, and Initiative Mercenaries. We have a very large number of pilots. Uh, we can put together a solid super cap fleet, a solid Titan fleet. So we're, I guess, we are a little bit bigger, and 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 uh, and and I guess I can't just play the, you know, we're we're just the roaming guys that just want to follow the content or anything, because that's not how we're perceived. Uh, that may be how we feel about each other, but that's certainly not how the rest of Eve looks at us. So I think sometimes that 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 we have to get that in our heads. Uh, but in terms of the fighting, uh, look, Panfam, we've been fighting Panfam for years, and they give as good as they get. We fight them hard. They fight us hard. I will say this: I am I am very proud of Hort. You know, I think from a group that started out as essentially, you know, just the feeder newbie group for Pandemic Legion and those guys, Horde has come into its own. They are a very powerful group. They know what they're doing. They are super aggressive. Uh, they fight very hard. And I like fighting those guys. I think they're fun to fight. Uh, uh, Gobbins and I are, pr are pretty good friends. I talk to him quite a bit on CSM and elsewhere. So I, you know, I gotta say, I gotta give, I gotta give Horde a lot of credit. They've done a, a very good job, and they haven't had to have any handholding from PL or NC Dot. I think these guys are a solid group on their own. So kudos to the to the Horde guys uh, who are out there fighting right now, uh, and thank you for managing to get a bubble up. So I have to go the last ten kilometers on this gate by, you know, by itself. I hate you. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna shut up and let you guys talk now while I. Well, I think I'm, Asher I'm just got back, uh, and one of the things that I want to talk about, and one of the reasons why, you know, obviously, I'm not going to take like our, our top military commanders off the field. So, like last week, we couldn't have these guys on, uh, but this week things are sort of sorted out now. I think in the battlefield. So, the, one of the things I wanted to actually ask an FC who understands tactics and things like that. Uh, 
uh, is basically what do you what are your opinions asher about the the current fleet meta in this war right because there's a lot of mutants everywhere uh there's a lot of carrier action on various various gates uh it does seem to be more of a dreadnought war uh, we're seeing a ton of like hot reds used everywhere and there's also lots of like slap fight hacking and tosis nonsense everywhere so i was kind of wondering what your general impressions and opinions might be uh about the kind of uh, overall fleet meta on all sides if you have opinions about it uh and what we're learning about the current state of balance and eve from what we're seeing in, yeah i have uh, i have okay I can, I can address that i also want to throw it back a philosophical question to you once you're done um uh -oh. but um yeah um mutants there are lots of mutants there's lots of hacks um I looked at the numbers of, of ships lost so far in this war and it was surprisingly low. This was like like four or five days ago, but it was like 700 munions lost on their side and we've lost like 220 sacks. So, uh, and then we've also lost like 180 munions. The number one loss on our side were zealots. And so- And that was all from that one fleet. That was yeah. all from the first Titan Save fleet that we did but, when- Well, there when was one other one, but, but, but there was one other one. But like the point is, is those um those ab zealots once they're committed you know they're 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 in there and they can't leave and so if a superior force gets to you you just lose all your ships whereas munins i mean you saw we we had uh we had bubbles and tackle and all stuff around that munin fleet in a pos and they just cruised out at 4k a second we you know heated props um you can't stop them uh and so everyone's flying doctrines that to one degree or another i mean not to commit and i would never throw aspersions at that because i've been flying that my whole eve fc career so I, I would never say you cowards like that's that's not how i would say um i would say that the adc has made these doctrines possible like there are a lot of people flying hacks now that did not fly them when they had you know 40k 50k 60k ehp and one mistake made made you lose your fleets like that you, you never saw these guys fly those those doctrines before uh, the EDC is sort of what's making this meta possible. Um, I think there's a lot of, you know, lack of commitment, uh, trying to draw fights into a favorable area for you, and no one's really taken those. All the fights that have happened that were major, were, the only one that was, like, opted into was that carrier loss. Uh, that was the only fight that went really badly that was an opt-in fight. All the others have been, like, a Titan jumped a titan warped <laughs> it was all stuff where you were sort of forced into that no one else is taking those fights like uh, uh you know intentionally everyone's trying to say oh you know uh blue ball blue ball ruin their morale and force a fight on our terms and just no one's going giving into not fighting on their terms all right so now that i've said that here's my sort of philosophical question for you uh -oh. all right here we all go. right this is about i was thinking about this demographics right um and you you look at the demographics of a goon swarm there's a lot of like guys who are you know now in their 30s you know, a lot of them have families um and we look at stuff like uh from horde where they have you know simp fleet and cuck fleet and we're just like wow that is uh that's not something i would want to participate in but the kind of player in eve who can stay up 18 hours a day and be ready to flash form it doesn't have kids is in college right um it they they that might appeal to them a lot more and you know I, i'm in my 30s i'm like ah, i'm not really interested in going in cuck fleet thank you very much but is that a demographic victory in the end when you're going to have you know uh, that's what i've been thinking about a lot is is, is goon swarm going to age out to the point where we're we're all friends we'll, we'll, we'll do our best but we are you know we have families we have jobs we have stuff like that whereas horde's going to recruit people who uh who you know are really into TikTok. And they can be at their computer longer. What do you think about that idea? I, you know, I don't buy it. Uh, I mean, I've seen that argument made before, but like one of the things that I've gotten from like reading hostile spy channels and stuff like that is uh, one of the weirdest things that I have seen. And, you know, enemies are going like Boomer Swarm and stuff like that. And that's not really where we are. Like, I'm Gen X. I'm actually, I think, uh, on the border of We're being barely a millennial. Gen X. Yeah, you I mean, and I are barely I'm born Gen in 78, X. right? We're in that. Uh, you know, we grew up with like Dawson's Creek and Beverly this is how boomer you guys are. You guys don't Oregon realize that boomer, boomer's not baby boomer. It's just like anyone, Any, anyone, anyone who has gray in his hair is a boomer. Well, well, yeah. That, yeah, but yeah, the, the thing about it from like reading what the enemy says is that, you know, I think that there are, it's really weird when you have somebody who is like a grown adult who is roughly in the same demographic age, right? Like the, the median age of Eve players is probably like 40 now. 
uh, when I was on the CSM a zillion years ago, and this is obviously no longer NDA, uh, the median age was like 37, and that was around 2011 uh, thereabouts. Uh, so I don't believe that there is like this suddenly this young, fresh group of hip kids or something who are all in pandemic horde. Uh, I think particularly when you see like the cock the fleet, uh, the cock fleet stuff, the sim fleet stuff, uh, watching any uh, Valcorsa post, uh, who incidentally, every time I say his name, he like <laughs> posts five or six more things on our Eve. And so I'm just going to keep doing this every meta keep show saying just to it. make suffer. It, it's hilarious, actually, because it just, just makes everybody suffer. They have to read more of his posts. Um, but I think it's essentially like uh, some of it is political, right? Like some of these things, some of these catchphrases that are getting used are people who are literally purged from the Imperium for cultural revolution violations. Like we have certain things in the Imperium that you are not allowed to do or say. And if you do or say certain bad things, you get fired out in an airlock with no excuse for it, right? And you don't get let back in because I'm an evil bad guy. So you can't be racist, sexist, or a piece of shit, or you get thrown out in an airlock. So a lot of these people who are in sort of uh, the enemy, some of them are people who uh, couldn't make it in the Imperium, got thrown out, uh, and they have like weird try-hard phrases, like the whole cuck thing. I don't think that's a Zoomer thing as much as it is like an incel alt-right loser kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, but in terms of generational divides, uh, I don't see it because, you know, so many of our FCs are in their early 20s, too. Like it's, uh, you know, we have people like Mike Flood, uh, Jay is, uh, you know, I guess I shouldn't be like telling everybody everybody's age. But we have uh, I'm not really seeing like a, a demographic difference uh, between our organizations. Um, and the other thing, another reason why I'm not too worried about like Gunstorm aging out or something like that uh, is that as our enemies has, have discovered, like we've talked about this before, but as usual, the bad guys don't believe it until they see it, uh, is there are thousands of players in Gunstorm who literally only play the game uh, when there's a hell war, right? Like the amount of people who come back every five or 10 years when something really serious kicks off and start resubbing and playing again, having to learn how to play the game again, uh, is tremendous. So. Uh, I don't think that's really that much of a concern, especially during a pandemic. I should have, I suppose the most obvious answer was during a pandemic that doesn't really matter because we're all stuck at home and have nothing to do but play EVE anyway. Um, I, got, so, I got updated numbers, by the way. They've lost 1,016 munits. We've lost yeah. 250 sacks and 275 I think munits. We have lost, so apparently the jackdaws are very important. Uh, I, I learned this because oh, yeah. the enemy in, in uh, chat here and on Reddit uh, constantly likes to bring up how many jackdaws we've lost. Uh, I guess the Jackdaw is the new Rifter. I am happy to lose 10,000 Jackdaws, guys. Uh, it, I think 2,000 Jackdaws is, what, like 200 billion isk? Uh, during the Jeff deployment before this war, we were shedding like 400 billion isk a day. Not every day, but there would be the days they were, whoops, you we whelped an entire carrier fleet. Whoops, you whelped an entire sack fleet because we were doing training operations. And because uh, we weren't playing for keeps and there wasn't all this Fozzy soft stuff going on, it was much more like run into low sec, got, get got, I've actually got the numbers in that we've lost we two. We've lost 2,000 jackdaws. They've lost 1,300 jackdaws and 3,300 cormorants. <laughs> So that's a lot of 35 mil pop. At 35 mil pop, that adds up. At 35 mil pop, that adds up. That's a lot of corms. Oh, uh, man. But yeah, no, it's uh, it, it is interesting because, uh, you know, actually, even before this, we had to skip our Illuminati meeting today because, you know, we had ops. Uh, but uh, our chief reimbursement person, uh, Atrium, was basically saying, like, yeah, subcap reimbursement has really been just like low uh, because, you know, once one side starts losing their logic, it reminds me of the, the old days where you'd have uh, during like the T3 cruiser cruiser meta when like once one side lost their logic, they would disengage and run. Uh, and so many battle reports would just be like, well, there's 20 billion logic lost here and then the fight ended um but i'm cool with that because we're on d right and so if the enemy wants to have like a disengage heavy uh, let's rely on our munins and our adcs sort of meta um i'm cool with that because if they want to break and run whenever a fight starts uh it buys us time and time is always the thing that matters the most for a defender and i think the other thing i would say is you know if we're talking about a war of attrition and i think that's kind of what this is going to end up being uh, just who can who can fight who can fight the longest who can hold out the longest? Uh, you guys have seen the MERs for the last two years, three years. You know you know that you know where the wealth is being created and where it wasn't, and and you guys can read them to do the math as well as anybody else. I, I feel pretty confident that uh, you know we're going to be okay at least in the short term. In the long term, depending on how long this goes. I mean, look, it took a month to clear Fountain. Aquarius is still, I guess, half, halfway done maybe, uh, but the regional gate is still up. The, 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 the one that's I'm important. Aquarius of the stuff we care about is fine. Yeah, so I feel like, you know, in the end, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer to get there. Uh, so 
we're, we're kind of at the turning point now where we're going to start getting into the real grindy operation. I said the grind started last week. Maybe to a certain extent I was being a little uh, uh, optimistic, but I think now the grind is really going to start. There are a ton of structures that got to get cleared out of Fountain still. There are a ton of structures that are going to have to get cleared out of North Quirius. Uh, and I think now we're going to start seeing some of the bigger fights. So, uh, But if this is going to turn into a War of Attrition, I'm looking at World War B, uh, the World War B tracker. Uh, it has Imperium assets at 3.5 trillion lost and Pappy assets of 2.7 trillion. You know, I, I, I think in the end, we've got a lot more risk to, to blow here uh, than I think uh, the bad guys probably do. Uh, at least I think for the most part, uh, other than Fraternity and some of the other groups that are, are making a ton of money and continue to make a ton of money, I think uh, the Imperium is pretty well situated in that regard. So we'll see what happens. Whoa. One thing I do uh, have to say, uh, Briss just got very, very uh, orange on me. There we go. Now you guys can see Briss. Oh, yeah. He's fixed it. Um, that was my surprise face. Uh, one, I've got a, a few sort of general comments about this, which is um, test, you're fucked. I just want Tess to know <laughs> you guys are fucked. Because even if you all get together with your 150,000 blues and you all snuggle together, PanFam are the only ones who are actually accomplishing anything in this war. And you all know that the moment that these people begin to break or falter or go away, or maybe they kick us out of all of our space and we retreat to NPC Delve and your little fantasy land kumbaya begins to come to pass, it's actually not going to happen. Yeah, finally, there'll be peace in the galaxy. Yeah. Once the you guys can't stand against us. We are already kicking your asses on a daily basis. The only reason why you are even in this war in any capacity whatsoever is mainly because of all the work Legacy does. Like, there's this one dude in Brave who has been doing pretty much all of the FCing. The Legacy groups have been outforming Test on the regular. Test FCs fucking suck. Uh, and the only group that's actually made any progress has been PanFam. And it's not like Test hasn't been trying to do things. You guys try every fucking day and you keep failing because, uh, well, one, you don't really have much of a leadership structure. Uh, two, what you have in there kind of sucks ass. Three, you're always so tired. And four, you know damn well that uh, regardless of whatever happens with PanFam, we're still coming after you. And unless you can keep the entire galaxy, the entire galaxy still on your side to defend your shit, you're next. And no, that's what's going to happen. The blue donut forever. Test will never be. Oh, alive. they'll all they'll all be friends forever, and everyone forever, will help forever. save Test from the wrath of the Imperium. Let so me tell you okay. what. Let me tell you what definitely won't happen. This guys, this is never going to happen. I'm I'm not being sarcastic. What will never happen is in say two months, fraternity will not attack AOM. They just won't do it. Those guys love each other. And then Test will not abandon Army of Mangos. That's definitely not going to happen either. In two months, none of that will happen. Your allies won't be attacking the people that you are a blue to. I'm just throwing it out there for something that won't happen. Sorry for wasting your time. Yeah, I think uh, it is just kind of an interesting thing because, again, part of this, the whole being on defense thing, is it gives us time. Every day that Test doesn't actually succeed in reinforcing any of our shit, it gives us bandwidth for the next couple of days. So you come into our space, you fail horribly, you hope that PanFam's going to do all the work, which is reasonable because PanFam are competent and Test at least has the understanding that they suck. I don't know why they started this war, but whatever. Uh, oh, I do know why they started. They, they, they suck so much they thought it would be easy and that we would collapse inward like a rotten melon or something, that this would all be over by next week. Uh, but... Uh, we have now had an opportunity to hire some mercenaries and get some more allies and set up our coordination systems in such ways that now we get to basically torment test with endless Citadel spam with lots of other fun things that we have coming. Um, so yeah, I, I really kind of think that the, the fun is just getting started. Every day that you guys fail to actually attack us in any significant way, you try, of course, just like you did today, but you actually have to succeed in reinforcing things for it, it to matter for the next couple of days. Uh, so I appreciate the bandwidth, and believe me, and every day that we have free moments to think, uh, we will be continuing to think and uh, put things into place to uh, focus on test, because test is still next. And uh, a lot of people are uh, very eager to, uh, to help out with that, so it's, uh, it's fun times. All right, I would like to make a momentous announcement. This is a major announcement. All right. All of my stuff is out of fountain, finally. Well I can log out of the game today. Well done. I'm done moving. I've only been moving since noon. It is now almost 5 o'clock. So there you go. 
Brisk is in Delve. I'm happy. I'm happy I can finally stop. It's, uh, I, I hope you guys things. like it. Like seriously, like Delve. Uh, one of the things about actually like playing the game now again. Eve 2020 mittens asking about how to set up a PI chain, uh, and like this really cool battle station and stuff. And like actually playing in Delve is wild. Like Delve is like it's one thing to like manage and run so the precious. empire, <laughs> but like to actually fly through this fucking thing is. It's like a completely different world. Like it is, it is, it is nuts what we have built. Um, actually, one of the things I wanted to do because I, w- I wanted to fuck with people, uh, and I forgot about this, uh, which is uh, it involved numbers, which is why I probably forgot about it. Uh, but one of the things I've been meaning to do in front of a whole bunch of the hostiles, ideally, and hopefully one of my directors can send me to this on Javers, I'd like to tell them exactly how many Fortizars we have and exactly how many of these other combat citadels we have in our space in Delve, uh, because they do seem to be very excited about uh, attacking us in theory in Delve. Hopefully, please, please, please come to Delve. We have uh, wonderful things to show you, and. Uh, it is. It's definitely north of like 400 fortizars. It might be maybe well, like a lot. Of, a lot of the a lot of the forts in like Fountain have been basically undefended, right? Because it was just it was too far out to defend. Mm-hmm. So I assume that they they think that once we have lost whatever that is, that they will then do the same here. Um, so that's that's okay. I mean, I think that's a, a cool assumption. I think it's a cool assumption. I, uh, uh, I I actually need to figure this out because I saw some guys complaining about. Uh, you know, blue ball Fortizar kill ops, or how we are not fighting for our various citadels. And uh, like, ooh, you lost a Fortizar. And I, I think that I remember that we talked about talking about this on like my first war update, and it was like, oh, it's the timing isn't right because we wanted you guys to feel like you were making progress and feel like this was almost over or whatever it is that you happen to be deluding yourself about right now. Uh, but I need to find the exact numbers so I can tell you exactly how much more. Uh, work you have to do. Just say a number and they'll claim it's some sort of spin. <laughs> 10, Leventy billion. That's how many. Eleventy billion. Eleventy. That's billion. how much I hired wings for. Actually, I, I hired the penis people there you uh, go. as mercenaries uh, for a weekly contract of eleventy trillion esque. Uh, and I actually have one of our recon directors on this uh, right now who is going to get us some exact counts. But the amount of structures that you guys have to show up for three three hours to uh, do while we will be sniping you relentlessly uh, is uh, a lot. So uh, I hope you guys are having fun and uh, welcome to there's, Delve. There's right? months more of it. Many months, many, many months in the future of uh, of this sort of fun available I, to you. I, I'm, you, you know, our numbers keep going down so much. The Imperium is clearly not amused at all. Like we are totally not having fun having these idiots you know, lunge into our puppy wood chipper all day, every day, right? You, you, guys, you guys want to know one more, one more sort of, and I know my sort of tuzzy listing things, but you want to know one more sort of interesting number from the overall battle reports? Uh, T2 Lodgy, uh, so far in the war, they've lost uh, 640, and we've lost, hang on, I just have the number here. We have lost 390. So we've killed double their logi. I don't know what that indicates, um, but we've killed double the logi that they have so far in the war. Um, in terms of supply, you've also lost uh, double the number of I hubs, Asha. So uh, shut the fuck yes. up. <laughs> true, true, right, true. There you go. I like this Jay thing where he just he just role plays as the other side. <laughs> uh, and I'm a I'm a zoomer as well, so I can get into the zoomer mindset. Yeah, you are a zoomer. Um, oh, Jay, like as, as a as a zoomer, does, does joining Cuckfleet and Simpfleet uh, appeal to you in a sort of a, a deep way that I can't connect with. I announced they were making a fleet called Cuckfleet. I was very, very tempted to leave in some federation and join Pandemic Horde. That was it. That was when it happened. God. And I feel bad knowing that we've killed that many Lodgy because, as my friend Alana in the chat has mentioned, most of those were her when we killed her like a dozen times again. I feel bad. She seems to get primaried on these fleets more often than I do, which is. Uh, which is rare. I did think it was funny today. We were uh, we were cleaning up the, uh, uh, the the dread drop that that killed the two titans, and uh, all all of the all of the cap fit dreads decided they wanted to shoot at me, and I was like, okay, well, okay, that's fine. You know, uh, that was cute. I, I enjoyed that. It was a nice little hi, brisk. It's nice to see you on field. I'll say one thing. So. I'll say one interesting thing about this war is they have se- severe numbers of advantage, like pretty much the biggest numbers of advantage you're ever going to get on a war this size. Um, so I think, 
I think that that's going to be really interesting when Horde moves is because there's going to be a lot of people in our area. And we just have we have no we have no way, even with the number of tests are forming now, I know they're really low, but even there, they're going to outnumber us quite a bit. So we're going to have to be really smart about the way that we fight. And luckily, I, I, our numbers are like have been better uh, the last week than they were the week before. So I think that indicates a lot of uh, enthusiasm from our guys. I think when you're defending your home, obviously, that has a sort of a motivational factor that attacking does not. Um, and I think that uh, I think that the real the real test is going to be like these capital fights is, you know, if I had this kind of super capital advantage that they have, I would be pushing through gates right now. But I'm I'm not running this war. So it's like, you know, that's the that's sort of the difference. Um, um, they're being really cautious. And I think that I think that sort of one interesting thing is, right, say that the big capital brawl goes down, right? Even if we lose the fight, we get to choose who loses their super fleet. Like, even if we lose the overall <laughs> That's right, fight, we do. Yeah, we, we get to we, we, we get, get to pick who we're gonna delete. <laughs> and none of none of them want to be the one deleted. So Frat's like, "Hey, you guys jump in first. Go ahead. Mm -mm. Like, we'll see you. We'll see you on the other side." Mm -mm -mm. It's like I don't know if you know this, Mittens. I think our Sino died. Sorry, we couldn't jump in right away. <laughs> there, are, there are some like um, uh, some alliance, other alliances. Uh, NC is pretty famous for this where they have to use regroup to get their guys to decloak on gates because that no one no one will decloak when you say decloak because they don't want to be the first to get shot because they're not reimbursed for their their dps ships what? so the fc has to press regroup to get them all to decloak or else he'll just decloak and no one else will so i, I it's sort of like that situation but writ large where they're all gonna be like yeah jump your titans in first we're coming in immediately behind you. We're lighting the sign as we're coming in. And I think, I honestly think that might be like a, a big draw or big drawback. Or one of the reasons they're not using their supers, even though they have this outrageous advantage, because they're afraid that they're going to be the ones who lose their or fleet. They're afraid that Progod is going to pull a Progod and do exactly what he did in BR5, right? Like it's basically, again, like the same gaggle of blues uh, in the blue donut. Uh, you know, Progod is wearing a, a test flag, but it's, it's Progod. It's in three all over again. Uh, and in BR5, Nully Secunda, you know, in CDOT and PL, like they, 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 they fought and died together in BR5. And there was a little controversy during BR5 uh, where the Nully Secunda Supercap fleet was uh, maybe not jumping in. And they certainly jumped what they had out first uh, because, you know, they were squirrely and they didn't want to lose their shit. And so, you know, if somebody told me that Pro God Legend was going to get the entire galaxy together uh, and him and Vili were going to lead a grand campaign against the Imperium and wipe out Goonswarm or get me to quit, which is, I guess, another fun thing, uh, because unfortunately, this is really a lot of fun and I'm playing more Eve than I ever have before, uh, quite literally, because, you know, metagame only up until recently, uh, getting me to quit by invading us is really just sort of ass backwards, but whatever. But, you know, I can understand but, their hesitation. I would not follow Pro God Legend Super Capitals anywhere uh, if he wanted me to be in the Vanguard or something like that because of what he did in BR5. I mean, the guy is notorious for this shit. So, pff, whatever. I get also, also to quit. Good. Yeah. Quick way to get Minz to quit. Uh -huh. You've infiltrate Goonswarm, you work your way up so that you're a logistics director, and then every week you have to tell him how many Athenors you've dropped. Slowly, week by week by week, Mitten's brain will tend to go. Yeah. He would tend to quit. Uh, <laughs> the endless discussion of moon rental policy, dark ochre rule policy, yeah. uh, anything that involves like forms. Crab policy. By the way, oh, it, in, Mittens has to the, negotiate uh, all the uh, all the, the ratting drama. He has to be the, the arbiter. So people go. in the chat are arguing over whether NC reimburses their DPS. I don't I don't know if they do right now. I have no idea. This is a story from some time ago. It's just an, an example of what happened with the sort of perverse incentive that existed. And this is this is exactly perverse incentive. Yeah, somebody is saying that overtime logging in and sitting in station will affect goon numbers. The plan is to starve them out. This will be a long war. So something that actually I've seen, and I, I don't, I, this could be the, like, there's a huge issue of echo chambers in wars, right? Like, this is, we're on the meta show. This is an Imperium echo chamber here. Uh, I'll call it that. I have no problem with that. Uh, the enemy has their echo chambers, and then there's like the public echo chambers, like you know, the Kugu the Discord or like maybe whatever's happening on our Eve. Uh, and I don't know whether this comment here uh, from uh, Zobozo11, which was saying overtime logging in will like wear people out, and the idea is to have us camped in station. Um, I don't know if people think that 
the Imperium is just hiding in stations all day because we're pretty visibly out there all day, every day, uh, assassinating hackers, uh, blowing up idiots who try to jump into our space, shoving them back into their space, and then sometimes chasing them, dropping citadels in their space, and generally wreaking havoc. So, like, we haven't really been in a situation where, like, we've been camped in and our guys are sitting around doing nothing. Uh, what else is interesting is that, uh, and I'm really glad we, so, for example, I think that we would be in a much more dire situation as the Imperium if we had not brought on board Dracaris, Ranger Regiment, and Iron Crown. Like, getting those guys on board was huge for us because we have an extremely strong uh, plus eight time zone now. Uh, and uh, in addition to the kind of support that we were able to have from PLA doing what UED was doing up in North Aquarius, uh, but we have essentially created a completely 24-7 international uh, all time zone operation here and not many other coalitions have that they have time zones where like things you know it's like 30 dudes around or whatever uh, but we're able to operate constantly all day every day and one of the reasons why this has been very useful to us is it ensures that essentially we're always able to be achieving some sort of objective and even if that objective is just making sure that our ADMs are up which is critically important I've been seeing people going like oh you're doing ADM fleets well we're on defense dude like we that's that's literally part of the game it's like saying oh you're you're killing hackers um, i mean the the problem the problem is that it's just as as unfun as it is to be camped in it is less fun to actually and i mean legitimately camp not cloaky camp mm -hmm. i mean to actually deny people from doing things for six months which is what you need to do uh to, to like break will like that then it, it just it's just not going to happen. I, it's it, everyone who's listening to this pays for this game in some way. They're paying their own money to enjoy the game. It you know, test NC Panvim. They don't have a military force, so you're, the the only thing driving that kind of thing is is just hatred, right? Um, and it, it, as as punchable a face as you have mittens, it's not six months of camping punchable. I'm sorry. Uh, even you mm. can't annoy people that much so it, it just it just won't happen like like that that's not a viable strategy from their part and i don't know if it, i don't know if that's actually like a truthful thing or they're just trying to spook goons i, I think don't know people what are is. bored of hating me i mean like the other thing about it is like i'm just sort of like a known like mittens with a wizard hat at fan fest like it, it's become a meme uh and uh, you know, the, the, the group of forces that are assembled against us by and large, like one of the things I, I think you've brought up a really interesting point, which is that like Pro God Legend gate got up and gave the speech. And I don't think, I don't even think Pro God was like one of the big players of this war. I think it was mainly like Villy and Manny, but Pro God gave his stupid speech where he's all like, Oh, goons are bad for the game or whatever. But most of the people that are trying to kill us right now are just trying to kill us because you know, why wouldn't they really like it? If, if it's a party of, you know, uh, everybody's going to take out the Imperium and, you know, you kind of might as well join in, uh, you know, the dudes in NC dot and PL and like horde, like they, there's not really any animus there. It's not, you know, sure. They can say like, they hate my guts. A few of them do hate my guts. That is true. Uh, but by and large, it's like, you know, I don't think anybody really hates Vince, right? It'll be like me hating Vince still, or also, even in the first place. Like I never I hated Vince. It's just why. Oh, why honestly, bother? guys, part part of this really is just we are the visible faces. Mm -hmm. Like you're on. They you're go on after every week. you. I'm on. Oh they come after me. God. I'm a teddy bear. I'm These the most children come guy after you Eve. because they they realize and I don't give a shit me. about their feelings or anything about them. They exist only as fodder for my amusement and the amusement of my people. But right. uh, they they think that you're an easier target. So like you know there I am. I'm looking at Reddit and waiting to see whichever you know what QAnon right wing psychopathic loser <laughs> incel <laughs> is gonna pop up on my mass tagger flag so I control them on Twitter and basically put them on blast in front of everybody who follows me about what a loser they are i don't and, know uh, what you guys are saying about everyone hates us because no one hates me i'm beloved thank you you are yeah. beloved you are beloved we are genuinely asher you are genuinely, asher. Asher. You are genuinely uh, <laughs> no, well here's the thing like this is one other thing is like i i don't really get like everyone hates goons like as, as far as like giant groups go i think we're the good ones like and we haven't always been but uh, we're not the biggest group in the game. We deploy outnumbered to other people's space. We always like, fight outnumbered these days. Like, yeah, for, no, by no, these days, I mean like the last several years, we're always yeah. outnumbered. <laughs> no one does that. We yeah. took like an even number Titan fight against a Keepstar. Like they had a Keepstar and Titans that had Tether. We took that fight. Like we went in on the offensive. Like we're the. I, no one else does that, right? Like none of the big groups do that. There's small groups that go out and fight outnumbered, but like no one else does that. And I, I like. The only way I, I see that, like, we are the bad guys is people just, like, dislike you and your wrestling 
like promoter shtick. Like that's the only reason, and, and, and like that's the only thing I can think of where it's like, like you know, uh, goons are the bad guys because Mitten says mean things to me. Like okay, oh well, baby, cool. pull snowflakes. Oh. Yeah, and just like you're doing now, exactly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, like, he, he doesn't care about my like, feelings. Oh, like, he's so it, mean in a space game. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, you got you've got like you know alliance executors who are like a, a, account ban evading those, and the alliances have like negative trillion esque wallet carries because of their let's say suspicious practices with money, right? Like like is right. But, but you'd never hear a negative word because those guys don't have a talk show where they say mean things about other people. Well, like, they, like don't, the, they don't have talk shows, period. I mean, look, yeah. think about it this way. All right, look at look at, look at this. Mittens and I are on here. I'm not even a leader of In It, but everybody thinks because I'm on this show that somehow I'm like I'm like the head of In It. And I you always have, laugh you have literally that. no power in It either. Like you're I literally. Nothing. I am a line member. A That's PM. all I am. Oh, I'm a CSM. I, at, at best, I am someone that people know. But if you look at the other side. Gobbins doesn't do any of these shows. Vince doesn't do any of these shows. Lady Scarlet doesn't do any of these shows. Headliner wants to come on this show, apparently, but we'll invite him when people stop asking me to. Because every time you ask, that's another month he's not getting on the show. Just be aware of that. And then you, you, all, of, all of the big guys, I mean, Villy never comes on camera. You'll get Progot on. He's the only one that, that's willing to go out there and, and do that stuff. That's it. So who else? Who else comes on these shows? Nobody. And so it would be interesting they have faces to come after right, us. Right. They don't. They don't have faces to come. We, you know, they, they don't do that for us. So there we go. So that that's why we get the heat. But that's I'm fine, just really like flattered it. by the Vince McMahon uh, analogy. Like, there you go. I am, yeah. I am. Vince McMahon. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm even wearing the freaking blazer for it and everything. I need to to get my style game going, and uh, you know, I try to do that that famous GIF of him. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you know the walk that like Conor McGregor stole that Vince McMahon did? Yeah, yeah I would love do, to you see do that. that walk. Yeah, exactly. With the arm swinging. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, that would arm be swing a walk. <laughs> that would make. And honestly, if to totally like, do that, if there was a I gift of it. you doing that in like Eve Vegas and it was posted on the Reddit and everyone was like so cringe, it's the cringiest thing ever. That would be like my <laughs> favorite Reddit thread. Oh my god! Or, well, the more that these people talk about yeah. me doing things that they call cr- you know, because in a cringe cock simp, all these kind of things. Uh, usually the kind of things that like fucking losers say and so like uh, the more that they're like oh you're so cringe and I'm like okay baby you're mad you're mad you're hating let's do it let's but do it the, keep it coming is, keep it this coming this is the thing this is the thing guys this is the meta show we are here to entertain we are here we do, we do <laughs> stick, exactly to entertain <laughs> us we do stuff that we think is funny for our audience, which is largely people oh, who are friends babies. with us, I will put on a beret and and dress up as Baghdad Bob because I think it's funny because that's how that's how all the stuff was. We do things that amuse ourselves, and we hope that you're amused at the same time. But in the end, honestly, guys, this is a game. I'm having a blast. I hope you're having a blast. I don't care what side of the war you're on. This is Eve at its best. This is why everybody wants to play this game. It's because. We have games where people will sit and watch a talk show for an hour and 10 minutes. 1,300 people on a Saturday afternoon will sit here and watch a talk show of us talking about Eve. We're not even showing you us playing it. We're just talking about it. You know, what other games do that? Hose mad. Hose mad. So, exactly. Hose mad. So, in the end, it's like, guys, I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun. I can say, sitting here, I like going out on fleets. I enjoy seeing Matani in the game again. I am asked for Asher. I am gay for Jay. I am hard for Hartley. I want to go out on all these fleets and see everybody. I'm enjoying myself. I hope you are too. And that's why we're all here. We're supposed to be having fun. If you're not having fun, first of all, you're watching the wrong show. And second of all, you're playing the wrong game. Can I, so, can I just tell you guys a good news? It. The um, the hurricane fleet that uh, Legacy is sending to headshot my house has been downgraded to a tropical storm fleet. So I'm <laughs> feeling better right now. <laughs> There you that go. I'm not gonna get headshot. I'm, I'm, I'm get reps. I'm, so we're doing we're doing okay over here. Excellent. Um, oh wow, it's after four already. Um, I was having so much fun uh, trying to imitate Vince McMahon, and now I, you know the thing is is that I'm I'm absolutely I have a very reactive personality in a lot of ways, and if I find something that makes people that I don't like upset, I will just play into it at every opportunity. <laughs> so like you know when, when you the guys, guys were that? like, did you guys see that, that parody of like? Um, that cartoon, which is like 
our beloved religion, our oh yeah, 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 yeah. ruler. Someone made an Eve version. Mm -hmm. I think there should be one for like shit posting. It would be like our hilarious trolls, them biting on our you know like it, they're it terrible actually, cringe posters. Yeah, they're our, ter our, they're our cringy shit posters. Yeah, they're terrible yeah. cringe posters. It's a good idea. They actually believe this, and then us being like <laughs> they took the bait. Our hilarious trolls, our funny memes. Their cringe post, they like, like, just it should just really be a perfect uh, image. For it, it is, I mean, it, it, it's, it's one of those irregular verbs, right? Yeah, it's, uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, all right, um, we're at the end of the show, we've hit our hour and we've gone over a little bit. We've provided you guys with more entertainment value than you were expecting. You got a whole extra five minutes today, you should be pleased. Well, apparently, I am. Uh, hopefully, this time, if we have a, a closing gimmick, uh, I won't. You know, be misinformed. No closing gimmicks. Over no, no closing gimmicks this week. We're done. Right. We had a gimmick at the start of the show, not at the end. So we're good. All right, guys. Well, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be back. Maybe maybe Fountain Frank will be a recurring character. I kind of I kind of hope so. Maybe it won't be Fountain. We'll, <laughs> I got we'll, the we'll costume. See. Baghdad Risk. It's an amazing costume. I love it. Uh, maybe next time I'll uh, I'll try to dress up like Vince McMahon or something like that. I don't know how that'll work. I'll uh, I'll see what we can work on here. It's uh, it's the, the 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 era of gimmicks here. But yeah, thank you guys for turning up. Uh, especially for the people that got really angry in chat that I got to ban repeatedly through it. Uh, you did entertain me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, high fives all around. Uh, thanks, Alrighty. guys. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, everybody. This has been the Meta Show for August 1st, 2020, along with Jay, Asher, and the Matani. I'm Brisker Ball. Thank you all for watching us. Pinecones, Delinda Est, and you stay classy. New Eat. <laughs>